Okay, moving on to our next chapter, which is vectors. Um, and we're going to give a brief intro to vectors because I'm skipping section 81, which really didn't have much substance in it. Okay, here's a buttload of vocab that goes with vectors. Um, a vector is a quantity of the magnitude, which is usually referred to as the lead. Magnitude lead becomes the same thing. And direction, you have terminal and initial points, which is simply where the vector starts and ends. The magnitude is the length of the vector. And you do need to know that if you see this, that means find the magnitude. That is the notation for magnitude. So I may not say find the magnitude. I may simply say find that, which means find the magnitude. It is not the absolute value of the vector, even though it's kind of what it looks like. Uh, a unit vector is a vector with magnitude 1. Um, which is kind of along the same lines as a unit circle. The circle, the unit circle has a radius of one. The unit vector has a length of one. Um, this is called component form. This is called linear combination form. And then we have something called a scalar, which is simply a number that even vector is multiplied by. Uh, and that is complete with bad grammar. So I'm not going to spend much time on that. You can pause it and write down those definitions if you want. I will refer back to these words as we go through some of the examples. Um, First, we're going to talk about how to graph a vector. Um, I told you that the vector, these are in component forms, number one and two, numbers one and two. Uh, the first number is your horizontal component. The second number is your vertical component. So if we're going to graph vectors, then we will just pick any starting point. The first number tells you how far left or right. The second number tells you how far up or down. So if I'm going to graph vector V, you can start anywhere. You can start at the origin if you want, but I'm just going to pick a point, and I know that I need to go to the right one unit, and then I need to go up to three units like that, and that should have given me arrows. Let me redo that. Um, I will start, and I'll go to the right. There we go. I'll go to the right one unit, and then I'll go up three units, and that is the vector V. You do put an arrow on it because, remember, the definition of the vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. So you have to indicate the direction of travel by putting an arrow on it. And this is vector V right there. Um, so I did that one in red. Vector W is negative 4 and a positive 5. That means wherever I start, I need to go left 4 and I'll go up 5. So I need to pick a point that gives me enough room to go left 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and up to 3, 4, 5. So that would be my vector W. It's done in green. And then finally, J is 3i minus 2b. That should be J, not 2b. I need to fix that um, here. That should be 3i minus 2j. Um, and that is the same thing as the effect. If you would write that in good point for that is the same thing as 3 negative 2. It means we need to go to the right 3 and head down. That vector, I need to pick a point, and I'll go right to three down to, and there's our vector for number three. So that was vector J. This one is vector W right here. All right, so that's how you graph vectors. Simply go, we saw this like slow to go uh, left and right, however many, and then up and down, however many. Um, now, Suppose I told you where the vector begins and where it ends, I'm giving you the terminal and the initial points, P and Q, and you have to convert it into component form. Uh, well, not the first one I made it really easy because I chose to start this vector at the origin. If I start at the origin and then I end up at 1, negative 5, then when I went on that journey, I went right 1, and then I went on my Y's, I went down 5. So this vector, P, Q, is going to be the vector right 1 down 5. Or you could write it as 1i minus 5j. It's the same thing. Um, so let's see. I may show that by graphing. For those of you who are not um, visualizing that very well, um, if you were to actually plot those two points, we have y axis, we have our x axis. Um, for number one, we had point P at the origin and point Q at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you actually plot the two points, then it might be easier for you to see that we did go to the right one and we went 
down 5, so 1, negative 5. Uh, number 5, we made it a little bit more difficult because uh, 5 does not start at the um, at the origin. We start at the point 2, 4, so 2, 4, we're starting right here. Change that to blue. And then we're ending at negative 1, 10, which is somewhere way the heck up here. Um, now, one way we could figure out how um, how far we went, some of y'all maybe look say, okay, if I go from 2 to the negative 1, well, my x's, I went to the left 3 units. And you may be able to just visualize that and figure that out. So you know that this vector, pq, is going to be left 3. So that would be negative 3. And then if I go from 4 to positive 10, then I went up 6. So it's negative 3, 6. Somebody's rep tap tapping on that door. Okay, so um, I think I was just saying, some of y'all may be able to look and just see that the x's go down by 3 and the y's go up by 6. So negative 3, 6. Um, if you're not that visual, you need a more algebraic wave software to do that. You could also subtract. Um, and what you do is you, sub you do terminal point minus initial point. So it's um, negative 1 minus 2 is the first number. And then 10 minus 4 is the second number, which would give you negative 3, 6. Um, I think on the next page I'll pause and I'll put up a, a, a formula for you that, that can help you out. There we go. So I just tackle that, tacked that off at the bottom here. But if the terminal, if the initial point and terminal points are x1, y1, and x2, y2, then you just do terminal point minus initial x2 minus x1, comma, y2 minus y1, and that will give you the component form of your vector. Um, now, adding vectors uh, algebraically is very easy. Like right here, I have the vector, I have vectors w, y, and z. And if I want to find vector w plus y, you simply add the corresponding uh, components. So vector w equals negative 4, 1, y is 2, 5, so w is going to be negative 4 plus 2, or w plus y, so negative 4 plus 2, comma, and then 1 plus 5, which is negative 2, 6. Pretty simple stuff. Um, now, graphing them, however, is a little bit more complex. If you want to graph uh, the addition of two vectors, I start by graphing w, which negative 4, 1 means I need to go left 4, left, two, three, four, up one. And my vector y is right two and up five. So I'm just going to do that separately. So right two, up two, three, four, five. Um, so this is my vector w. This is my vector y. If you want to do w plus y, that means you start with w and you graph it first. So I'm graphing uh, graphing W. And then I have Y graphed. Ah. Hang on. I'm having a hard time here. Uh, and then to do W plus Y, you take the Y vector and you put it on the end of the W vector. Right there. So you start with W and then I want to add Y to it. I put Y on the end. And then the sum of W plus Y is what you have from your very initial point to your final terminal point. That right there is the vector W plus Y in green. And if you notice W plus Y, I went from my initial point left to and up 6, which is exactly what we said we should be doing. Um, now Z minus Y, if you subtract them, that's a little bit different. Um, it is algebraically as simple as subtracting the components. So Z minus Y Z is negative 3. I'm going to subtract the um, components of Y. So negative 3 minus 2 and 0 minus 5. And you end up with the vector negative 5, negative 5. Um, but graphing, again, is a little bit complex. Uh, we're going to start with the vector Z, which is negative 3, 0. So my vector Z, I'll do that one in blue here, is negative 3. We'll start and go left 3. And I won't go up or down. The vertical component is zero, so there's a vector c. Negative y, if I want to subtract y, y initially, the original y went 
this way, it went right to and up 5. Negative y is going to go in the exact opposite direction. It's going to go left 2, it's going to go left 2, and down 5. It has the exact same length. The length of negative y is the same as the length of positive y. You just go in the exact opposite direction. So here's my vector negative y. Um, let me group those together so I can slide them around. And if I want to do the vector z minus y, then I'm going to start with my vector z, which is right here. And then I need to leave room to go um, down or to take negative y onto the end of it. So there's negative y. And the sum of z minus y is this vector. And if you look at where that vector began and where it ended, it did go left 5 and down 5. So this is my vector z minus 1. So that's how you uh, do the addition of vectors algebraically and graphically. I think two more things. Oh, just one more thing. So there's the addition of vectors. And the very last thing is finding the magnitude. Which remember, magnitude looks like the absolute value. And magnitude is the length. So if I'm going to find the length of a vector, this vector is the vector 1, 3. So if I were to graph that vector, I would start somewhere, and I would go right 1, and then I would go up to 3. And I'm not pulling out the grid this time, but this vector looks like this. That's my vector v, and I want to find the length of that vector v. To find the length, we're simply going to do Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to pull out, uh, and I'm going to create a right triangle where I go right 1 and up 3, and we can do the Pythagorean theorem. Right 1, up 3, and the magnitude, I know that v squared, well, I should call that v, uh, that length, uh, I'll call it that. Ah, this is bad. I'm going to erase this in a second. But V squared, I'll call it V. So the hypotenuse squared equals 1 squared plus uh, 3 squared. V uh, squared equals 1 plus 9, which equals 10. But then you have to take the square root, right? So the magnitude of V ends up being the square root of 10. Um, and so that is your vector there. That really is bad for you to call that V because V is the vector. It's not really the length. Um, maybe I should call that L, L for length. So I'll call that L squared, L squared. And the length squared is 10. And then that means the length, which is the magnitude of V, is the square root of 10. Well, we really just did the Pythagorean here which means if you are ever asked to find the magnitude or the length of a vector, we could jump straight to the formula, which is this. Um, and the magnitude of a vector will always be the square root of a squared plus b squared. It is simply your Pythagorean theorem. So if that's how we're going to find magnitude, let's find magnitude of this vector, v. This is my a, this is my b. For number 9, if I want to find the length of vector v, I will simply do the square root of negative 5 squared plus 2 squared. Negative 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. And that would be the magnitude of vector v. So uh, there is a little introduction and a few basic operations of vectors. We'll add some more to this as we go on. Uh, and there will be a lot of formulas tied to vectors. So you may want to just get a whole other sheet out and just have a sheet dedicated to formulas because there's going to be Maybe added on to this uh, magnitude.